Yeah. So, hi, thanks. Um, so, so can you see my slide? Yeah, sure. Sure, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks, thanks for introducing me. And uh, uh, my name is Joyen. I come from the Department of Computer Science, University of Oxford. So today I'm going to present our work, Oil to Back the Star, Embedding of Oil Ontologies. So this is a work in collaboration with another two researchers, Penn and Inhorex from Oxford, and uh, Anafto from City University of London, uh, Oil from uh, University of Oslo, and uh, Denver from Samsung Research UK. So um, what, what is oil ontology? Oil ontology has been widely used to uh, reply, represent different kinds of domain knowledge, especially graph structured um, vocabularies, such as um, biomedical taxonomies. So an oil ontology is usually composed of two parts, the T-box and the A-box. The T-box um, defines different terminologies. It defines um, atomic concepts as um, classes, it defines atomic roles as um, object properties for representing a um, relationship between entities. Besides, it also defines complex, co complex classes and uh, properties by um, logic, construct logic constructors in discrete logic. It also defines kind of constraints such as property uh, domain range. It defines subsumption between classes and uh, properties and a lot of other semantics. Uh, T-box, um, T-box actually is data. It includes uh, individuals, which are also called uh, instances. And it has a lot of facts, such as membership assertions, um, the role assertions for kind of relationship between entities. Um, so to construct an ontology, we often use um, language defined by uh, W3C, such as OIL, RDF, and RDF schema. So it has... Um, it has defined several built-in properties. For example, um, RDF, RDFS, RDFS subclass of for defining a subassumption relationship and RDF type for defining membership relationship. And uh, it, for each entity, it uses um, so-called IRR, which is composed of prefix and name and ID to uh, for representation. So an ontology also includes a lot of literals, which are as important as T-box and A-box. So they can be um, kind of value, values associated with data properties. And it also can be um, metadata defined by um, annotation properties, such as labels, synonyms, and um, cut definition and comments. So here's an example. This is, this is a segment of the health lifestyle ontology called um, Palace. So you can say um, uh, in the rectangle, uh, we have we have different kinds of instances and in the ellipse, we can have different um, classes and the classes higher usually has, have a structure of a hierarchy. And this is the next example, which is a segment from um, a food ontology called the Fulden. So in the central ellipse actually is a class for defining elements. So you can say it has um, annotations, annotation properties such as definition and comment to describe this um, Concept it has also logical construct. It belongs belongs to an an existential existential restriction which defines um derived from plant. So it's a uh, logic uh, definition towards the class Adam Adam mean. So uh, ontology and logic graph embedding is to uh, represent entities in a vector space such that the semantics of these entities can be kept in the vector space. So here, um, by entities, I mean um, all the elements in, in an ontology. It can be classes. It can also be properties and, and instances. So I would like to divide current KG and knowledge graph embedded method into two paradigms. One is end-to-end -end paradigm. So uh, these methods use a score function to model the likelihood of a fact and then define losses to learning the paradigm, learning the embeddings. So typical examples are those translation-based methods. Uh, later, the factor models and the kind of graph linear networks. The second paradigm is called um, pipeline paradigm. So uh, these methods often transform the ontology segments into uh, sentences with their relationship between entities kept, and then they try to learn some um, sequence embedding models such as um, continuous skip grant to uh, learn the embedding of the entities. 
So a typical model like node vector for underlected graphs and RDF vector for graphs composed of uh, RDF triples. So um, an ontology is very expressive. It can have different kinds of semantics. So in embedding, we hope to consider all these semantics. Um, the typical KG node graph embedding methods such as RDF two vector and chance E, they usually focus on graph structure. Um, maybe some extension, some state of art extension can support the literals and the logical constructions, but most of them focus on graph structure. While the uh, latest um, ontology embedding methods such as onto vector and OPA two vector, they currently consider merely focus on hexagons and uh, sometimes they can support the literals. Well, EL embedding and quantum embedding are two state of art logical embedding methods. They focus on the logical relationship um, defining an ontology. While our method, oil to vector star, is a bit ambitious, we hope to encode all kinds of semantics in the embedded space. So this is the framework. It belongs to the pipeline paradigm. So it first extracts sentences from the ontology and then change a word embedding model. So um, to support different kinds of semantics, it extracts three kinds of documents. One is struct document, which is to encode the semantics of the graph structure and algorithms. While the second is a lexical document, it so it adds it uses the structure document as a backbone, but add add further add on um, the semantics of the literals. While the third is a com combined document, which is to make a connection between the entities and the words. So um, to construct the structure document, we first need to uh, transform the ontology into um, RDF graph. So before the transformation, actually we can use reasoning to infer the hidden knowledges by some reasoner such as Hermit. Uh, we have two solutions to make the transformation. The first is to use OI to RDF graph mapping, which is defined by W3C. For example, um, in the above example, uh, element class is a subclass of some extension restriction. This is transformed into three triple, uh, four triples, and a black box, a black, um, a black uh, node X is used to represent the extension restriction, and this black node is defined by uh, three uh, triples for describing its um, its its semantics. Um, we can also use projection rules, which are originally developed for uh, ontology virtualization. So in the above um, above example, uh, we can straightforwardly uh, generate um, a very simple uh, triple. So edamame is a subclass of um, plant, but it, it's projection. So it means it loses some semantics, but it uh, keeps the majority of the semantics, especially the correlation. And the graph generated is quite um, quite simple and straightforward. So. Um, so uh, the struct document is composed of sentences of entities. So each entity is represented by an IRR. So it includes two parts. The first part is passes extracted by random work plus uh, with for Lehman uh, subtree kernel. So for example, in this segment, we can generate um, um, the, the first sentences, which is represent, um, represent a part, a work starting from uh, for the 4001 to from the um, from this property to uh, another um, another entity, and the second the part is sentences from algorithms. We consider all Manchester syntax to transform each algorithm into a sentences. So let's see the example of Adam again. So it is transformed um, transformed into a sentence starting with the subclass and then um, the the predict acceleration and then um, and then the extension restriction is just represented by um, uh, the property uh, built in a uh, built in um, world and um, and the the uh, extension class file class class. So uh, the next document is composed of um, word sentences. So it is composed of it is also composed of two parts. The first part is based on the transformation of the struct document for each entity and sentences and for each end sentence. It replaces the entity by its word. Here is an example of a working um, start from the blonde bear. So it is represented by each entity is represented by their corresponding uh, words in the label. The second part is based on the text of annotation property. For example, an element has the uh, literal information defined by definition. So we can generate a sentence from this definition text. 
um, combine, combine document is to preserve the correlation between um, entities and the words. In some applications, we can only use the vector of the entity IR alone. So the combined document could encode the correlation between entities and uh, between entities that are connected by some uh, hidden words. So the citation, um, the citation when only word vector can be used um, is similar. So we consider two uh, approaches to generate the combined document. One is by a random selection for each and for each sentence from the struct document. It randomly um, selects one entity, keep, the, keep its IRR, and replace other entity by words. While the second solution is by traversal. So it traverses each entity, keeps this entity, and replaces other entities by text. So one sentence, one sentence with the length of n entities will lead to um, n combined sentences. Uh, with, the, with the documents, we train a word embedded model. We use, um, here we use continuous the back of Back of box. We can also consider optionally. We can op we can optionally consider um pre-training the pre training the model with uh, normal text corpus such as Wikipedia, Wikipedia page dump, and then um, fine tune this Wikipedia uh, this uh, word to vector model with the uh, documents extract from um from the ontology. We will see the result. I will show the results of this option. And it is important to know that uh, we can generate vectors of both entities and and words. So we can have two, uh, two options. We can like to use either of them for downstream applications, or we can concatenate them for downstream applications. I will also uh, show, uh, show this more with evaluation. So um, in, this, in this study, we con conducted two case studies to evaluate the embeddings. One is class membership prediction. So this is to predict whether an instance belongs to a class. The other is class subassumption prediction, which is to predict whether a class belongs to another class. So in both cases, we use embeddings of the two entities as the input, and then use a class file such as um, random forest to predict uh, the score to indicate whether uh, the algorithm is true or not. So uh, in application, we can learn from existing algorithms and then predict plausible algorithms with scores. Um, there are other um, I will show more in the evaluation so about these two case studies. So there are other applications of ontology embedding, such as um, ontology clustering, um, ontology alignment, and neural symbolic AI. So maybe I say a bit more about neural symbolic AI. So in neural symbolic AI, the idea is to represent domain knowledge by an ontology, and then inject this ontology embedding, this ontology's embeddings into some learning algorithms for augmentation. For example, we can Define some symbolic, uh, define some domain knowledge as rules and inject the embedding of these rules um, into the learning algorithm to address sample shortage problem. So, yeah, here I list some uh, citations. Um, so, we use three uh, real world large scale ontologies for evaluation. Two are uh, Helix and Fulton, as I introduced above. And the third is Go, which is a gene ontology, which is, um, is extremely large with tens of thousands of classes. So um, I, I have the following uh, splitting, 70% for training, 10% for validation, and 20% for testing. So uh, I remove, it's very important to note that I remove the validate, validate and test algorithm from ontology to be um, uh, objective. So uh, in, for the metrics, I, for each um, given entity, I rank all the candidate entities and see whether I see the, um, See whether the ground truth is um is in the in a good position. So we, I use uh, MRR and it's at K to uh, validate performance. So both metrics um the higher the two metrics, the better the performance. Um, the red table are the overall results in comparison with different baselines. For oil to back star, we use um uh, we actually this baseline I have already introduced and listed in the above in the in the table in the first thing at the beginning. For oil to vector star, we use um we use uh, no reasoning and we use oil three C oil uh, three uh, W three C oil to other graph mapping and other uh, settings which are just by the validation set. So we have the following um observations. Uh, first, we find the quantum embedding and ER embedding, which are specifically designed for embedded logical relationship, um, actually perform quite well. And then we find um. Uh, typical knowledge graph embedding such as IDF2 vector trans E and this mode, uh, which focus on the um, 
for folks on embedding the graph structure are better than the um, logic based method, but are still quite poor. And the state of art ontology embedding, ontology embedding baseline or PA2 vector performs quite good. It's better than the above two kinds, but um, it's still worse than our uh, solution. So our solution or two vector is, uh, is the best. Um, we can also find, uh, but it's a surprise to find that the, the pre-trained uh, word to vector performance is quite good. Uh, this is because in our case study, we find actually in many real world ontology relevant case studies, a prediction task, we can find that the text plays the most important role than the structure and um, the logics. Uh, but we find uh, oil to vector star, which is a tailored word to vector by the ontology, is much better than pre trained word to vector. So it means um, um, the plus, the plus, plusing the um, logic structure and the graph structure and the logic into the uh, COPS is very effective. It improves the, uh, the word embedding model. So we, we, uh, we have conducted a lot of ablation studies. We compare different document organizations. Uh, the, IR uh, vectors and water, uh, water vectors to validate the insight of our design. So the performance of some settings is consistent from task to task and from ontology to ontology, but some are not. For example, um, on Harris, we find uh, using all three documents actually is similar to just to use struct document and literal document. And we find use both vectors is better than use word to vector along and is much better than use IR vector along. And on Foden and the Go, the strategy is a bit different. We find a struct document, list document, and word document are the best when they are used together. So we also conduct a lot of other ablation studies. Here, I just give the conclusions and maybe we can discuss more in the uh, post session. Um, so we find, um, we, we compare OI to IDF mapping and the projection rules, but we find that their performance depends on what working strategies you, you use and what, what working dips you set. So, but we find if um, a better setting is, uh, an optimal setting is used OI to IDF mapping is a bit better than uh, the projection rules. And we also, um, we also find that uh, using um, with the Lehman uh, subject kernel can achieve better performance and lead to, um, smaller dips, which means less uh, smaller um, cops and the less training time. And we find um, reasoning in advance uh, actually has a limited, uh, uh, limited impact. Um, yeah, and the pre-training by text cops is, um, is also, also has limited uh, impact and even, it even may lead to some negative impact on membership and subsumption prediction. So we also, uh, did some um, um, we are, we also did some virtualization and uh, uh, feature validation. So to validate the embedding of to entered in membership prediction and subsum prediction are discriminative. We compare the distance of the two entity in exon between the positive exon and negative exon as to see uh, whether the, the gap is larger enough. If it's larger, then um, uh, the features are quite good. Um, so I mean. I think um, I need to conclude. So in this study, we propose oil to vector star uh, for oil ontology embedding. So it is a framework um, and it tries to consider all kinds of semantics in an oil ontology, including graph structure, textual literals, axons, and the logical constructor. So in the future, we will explore contextual embedding instead of just non-contextual embedding word to vector. We try to consider um, pre-trained language models. Actually, we have already uh, applying these technicals in BirdMap, which is an ontology alignment system based on prediction. And we also try to extend this uh, framework to a large graph with not only ontological schema, but also large scale facts. Um, this situation would be different from the ontologies uh, I mentioned above. So, and we also uh, try to support, um, we also try to apply such technicals in ontology based low resource learning, such as zero shot learning and few shot learning as I mentioned above. Um, yeah, finally, thanks for your attention. And you can see the codes and, um, and, and the uh, runnable uh, program on our GitHub uh, repository. And I need to uh, especially thanks uh, Samsung Research UK and the Series Center for Scal uh, Scalable Data Access. Uh, they sponsored us. Um, yeah, they, they sponsored this work. So thanks a lot. <laughs>